Hello and welcome to OpenTelemetry Collector Deployment Patterns. My name is Judas Sipashon Krolling. I'm a software engineer at Red Hat and I work on the distributed tracing team. I am a maintainer on the Yeager project and a collaborator on OpenTelemetry. Now, um, for this conversation here today, we're talking about patterns. Before we go into that, we're going to invest a couple of minutes talking about OpenTelemetry and the OpenTelemetry Collector. Now, those are the patterns that we're going to cover here today. The first one is the very basic pattern. And if you followed a quick start of OpenTelemetry Collector, you know them already. Now, the second pattern is the normalizer pattern and followed by a couple of variants of uh, a pattern for deploying OpenTelemetry Collector on Kubernetes. We talk about load balancing, multi-cluster and multi-tenant scenarios as well. All right, so um, all of the the patterns that we talk about here today, they are available in this repository here. It, this repository contains uh, images and configuration file examples and a deeper explanation on those patterns. Now, you can download this slide deck here uh, either from the conferences website or from this platform here. And I'm also sharing this slide deck right now on Twitter. All right, um, so let's get started. The Open Telemetry is a project that was um, uh, created uh, with the fusion of Open Tracing and Open Census. Um, it, it is actually uh, composed of two big parts. The first one is the specification and conventions part. So it is uh, where the community gets together to determine uh, what are the cementing conventions that we should all be following when instrumenting our applications. And it also defines um, the specifications on, uh, for, for telemetry data types, like right? for uh, traces, for metrics, for logs, and so on and so forth. We have um, a group taking care of the, the client APIs or the instrumentation APIs in SDKs. Um, we have a, a group making a definition about OTLP, and OTLP stands for Open Telemetry Line Protocol, and it is, um, in concrete terms, it is a protobuf, basically, right? But it is a specification of on, on how we can transmit data, uh, telemetry data from one service to another, right? So it specifies both um, the, 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 the message and um, how the services should look like on the client and on the server side. And then uh, the fourth big part of open telemetry is the collector and the collector is where we are focusing on here today and the collector if you go to open telemetry's website the documentation and open the collector documentation um, you see that the definition of the collector is this one here it's a vendor agnostic way to receive process and export and export telemetry data uh, it kind of um, hints at the internal architecture of the collector, and the collector is composed of uh, the following uh, components, right? Uh, it has receivers, it has processors, it has exporters, and it has extensions. We're not talking about extensions that much here, right? So uh, there are a special type of component um, that is um, not part of the pipeline. And a collector is um, viewed as the pipeline for the telemetry data. So data is either um, received or, um, or, or pulled by receivers. And the receivers put data at the beginning of the pipeline. Now, once they, they, they flow through the pipeline, they get to the processors, and the processors have the ability to look into this data and um, do some action with them, or just um, observe this data and create perhaps a new data point out of it. Now, um, a processor, um, once the, all the processors have finished uh, doing their jobs with, with that specific data point, with that batch of data, uh, data reaches the, the exporters. And exporters can, again, be passive or active, so they can be um, sending data actively to a final destination, or they might be making data available for other systems to, um, to extract from the collector. Now, um, when we talk about receivers, we are talking about things that emulate a Jaeger server or that emulates the behavior of Prometheus or that implement OTLP on the server side, uh, or uh, they might emulate a Zipkin server as well. Now, uh, processors, they might be doing sampling, they might be changing attributes or, or um, adding, removing, updating uh, some attributes from the data points themselves. They might be doing some batching, they might be doing some routing, and so on and so forth. Uh, 
And uh, when it comes to exporters, we have a bunch of them uh, for pretty much all the um, relevant systems and vendors out there. Right? So we have exporters for Jaeger, Zipkin, and, and LTLP. We have um, uh, exporters that, em uh, that emulate or that expose a, pr a Prometheus uh, compatible endpoint. Um, so that other Prometheus compatible systems could uh, can scrap data out of the out, out of the process, um, and we have uh, exporters for pretty much all of the commercial commercial vendors out there. All right, and besides the collector proper, besides the Open Telemetry collector itself, uh, we have a, a a couple of repositories or a couple of projects that are a part of the same ecosystem. And the first one and the biggest one is the Contrib. The Contrib is where all the non-core components live, including the, the vendor-specific ones. Right. So if you want to use a vendor-specific uh, component for OpenTelemetry Collector, you'd probably download the Contrib distribution first. Now, um, you might notice that the Contrib distribution, the Contrib binary, is actually quite big. So you might want to consider using the uh, OpenTelemetry Collector Builder to pick and choose which components you want as part of your own distribution of the collector. right? And then uh, for that binary, you have only the components that you need. So it's very slim down. So it's, very, it's very lightweight. All right, this is how a configuration file looks like for the collector. So we have uh, sections for, for the extensions, for the receivers, processors, exporters, and we tie them all together under the service node, right? So we specify the extensions that we want there for, for this process, and we specify the pipelines. Now the pipelines can be uh, traces, metrics, and logs pipelines, and we might even have multiple pipelines for the same data type. So we can have multiple traces pipelines here, for instance. In our example, we have only one receiver, one processor, and one exporter. All right, so let's get started with the patterns then. The very first one is a ba basic pattern. And in this case, we have our application instrumented using the OpenTelemetry SDK, exporting data uh, with OTLP to an OpenTelemetry collector located somewhere. Now, that OpenTelemetry collector then uh, exports data to a final destination. In this case here, Jaeger. Note that throughout this presentation, I'm using Jaeger as an example here of the final destination, but you can replace that with pretty much everything that you want, right? So you can be a different tracing solution, or it might be a specific vendor, or it might be even something not tracing specific. So you can be, in most of the cases, it can also be uh, like Prometheus in here. And um, so, this is our first pattern. Um, I hope it's it was enough, you know, to um, uh, for, to warm up. Um, and a second pattern that we have is, or it is a variant of the first pattern, and it is a fan out pattern. Uh, going back to our original image, we have the same application instrumented with OpenTelemetry SDK, uh, exporting data um, uh, with OTLP to OpenTelemetry Collector, and the OpenTelemetry Collector exports data to Jaeger and additionally to a, an external vendor. Now, the point here is we still have the ability to own our data, right? So we, we can still have um, access to our raw data within our realm or within our infra. At the same time, we can send the same data to an external vendor and have a different view of this data. Now, the second pattern that we have today is the normalizer pattern. And uh, in this case here, we might uh, probably have an, a Prometheus client uh, instrumenting our application for, for metrics, and we might have our application instrumented using open tracing for the traces with the Jaeger client um, as the actual tracer. Now, data is then either made available to Prometheus or sent to Jaeger. And in this pattern here, we are using the collector as a drop-in replacement for Jaeger and Prometheus. Um, for you know, when it comes to the, the contact with our application, so Prometheus is now scraping uh, the open telemetry collector that we have, so not our application anymore. At the same time, the application is sending uh, the Jaeger data, or the Jaeger client is making a connection to the open telemetry collector, thinking that it's a Jaeger server, Jaeger collector. Now, um, the point here is that our open telemetry collector that is sitting in the middle between those systems it has the ability of looking into all the, the data points that are flowing through this um, uh, um, 
through this pipeline here or, or through this communication channel and ensuring that they all have the same set of basic labels, right? So let's say that we want the um, all data points to contain the cluster name they, they originated at. So we can ensure that the collector has a couple of processors, adding a collector label to metrics and to traces, right? Now, our third pattern here is um, a, a couple of patterns actually on uh, to deploy on Kubernetes. The first one is using a sidecar. So a sidecar on Kubernetes is basically a, a second container as part of your pod. So you have your application pod uh, with one container in it, and you add a second container with the OpenTelemetry collector. Now that OpenTelemetry collector acts as an agent, and it sends data then to an external collector, possibly deployed on, on another namespace, observability here in this case. And from that collector, we export data to Jaeger. Now there are a few advantages to this kind of approach here. The first one is, if we decide to change the way that we send data to Jaeger, or if we change our Jaeger location, or if we decide to not use Jaeger anymore, or if we decide to use a, a, another exporter in addition to Jaeger, uh, then we can just change this one uh, deployment here in our um, observability namespace. We don't have to change any of the sidecars. Now, the second advantage is we're not talking about only one application here, right? We're talking about multiple applications in multiple namespaces. So what we, uh, the advantage here is we get better client-side load balancing when we have multiple instances of the clients making a connection to one server, right? So we, when we scale up um, the number of instances or when we scale up our open telemetry collector on the observability namespace, then uh, all the new collectors or, or all the new instances of the collectors on the workload namespaces, they would then be um, using those new instances. So it's very likely that the load balancing would work better when you have more clients than, than, than fewer clients. Now, a, another advantage of, of, of having sidecars on a per application basis, on a per pod basis or you know, per deployment, uh, is that we can, we can fine tune the configuration for that collector to the necessities of that application, of that deployment. Right, so if we have a, a critical um, um, application here, if we have a critical deployment, we can have a very specific configuration for the collector, perhaps with a uh, more, you know, more resilient, more um, uh, retry mechanisms and, um, and perhaps even more memory, more CPU allocation for that uh, specific process. Whereas for lower criticality services, we can have a lightweighter configuration for, for that agent, for that sidecar. Now, of course, managing hundreds of sidecars might be a headache, uh, and that's why we might want to use an OpenTelemetry operator here to manage the sidecars for us. So the OpenTelemetry operator can inject and manage sidecars on our behalf. All right, the, uh, the second variant of this pattern is um, not using a sidecar, but using a daemon set. So the advantages are very similar. So we have a, a collector that is very close to our application, to our workload, uh, making it easy for the application to uh, offload data very quickly to the sidecar, or sorry, to the agent, in this case here as uh, in the daemon set. Um, but we don't have many of the advantages of the sidecars. For instance, we don't, um, it is harder to do multi-tenancy in this kind of scenario, right? Because we have multiple namespaces running on the same node and we have only one collector running on that node. It means that that collector is gonna see data from all the tenants in there. So it's harder for us to manage a tenancy at that level. Not impossible, of course, but harder. Um, it is also harder to have multiple instances of the collector on that same node, right? So we, if we need to scale up for some reason, then it's harder to do. Again, not impossible, but harder, especially when it comes to service discovery. Now, um, the biggest advantage of daemon sets over sidecars is, as you can imagine, uh, the, the overhead, right? So um, open telemetry collector itself is not big, or it doesn't have to be that big in here. So as a sidecar, I would say that um, the, the memory, memory consumption of the collector itself should be around five to 10 megabytes. Um, but it does add up when you have hundreds of, of those uh, instances, right? When, when we have as a demo set, we only have one collector per node. 
so we our overhead here is, is, is lower. Now, um, the idea is that each one of those collectors would then um, uh, collect data from the applications running on those nodes, so it's local to the application, and uh, resiliently, securely, and uh, safely send data to a central collector. All right, now our next pattern is about load balancing. And uh, to explain a little bit about why you need load balancing at the collector level, and instead of you know just a regular gRPC or HTTP load balancer, we have to uh, go back a little bit and understand how tracing actually works, right? So if we have a user doing a transaction on service A, uh, it's very likely on a microservice architecture, it is very likely that service A would make a connection to service B, to service C, to service D, and each one of them would then make uh, downstream connections to whatever services they, they need to get information from. Now, um, the way that tracing works is not that we're going to wait for all the services to complete and then service A sends data to, a, uh, to the tracing backend. It's not like that, right? Um, the way that it works is service A is responsible for collecting and sending data uh, for uh, um, um, related to its own operations. Right? So only the spans belonging to service A are going to be sent from the service A to a collector somewhere. Now, um, the idea that we have here is that each collector should have a complete view of the trace so that it can make a decision based on the, uh, based on that on that trace. So, for instance, if we are doing table-based sampling, we want to take a look at the whole trace and make a decision whether we want to sample or not. Or perhaps we are doing some some uh, some anal analytics on the tracing data. So we want to take a look at the whole trace. Um, perhaps compress it in some way, perhaps uh, just um, extract some metrics and discard the trace itself, uh, and, and th things like that. Now, to do that, we need to ensure that all the traces, all the spans for the same trace are at the same collector. What we do not want to have is spans for the same trace at different collectors. Now, we ensure that by having two layers of open telemetry collectors. So the first layer is a, is a load balancer layer. Uh, with uh, It is a basic open telemetry collector with the load balancing exporter. Now, this load balancing exporter will split the batches that it receives from the clients. It will look at each single span in it. It will take the, um, extract the trace ID, hash it, and determine which collector should be receiving this data point and it sends data to that data point. So you can have a HA-like um, deployment of the load balancer with a three in, uh, replicas, for instance, where uh, and at the same time having hundreds of instances of the collector uh, backing that load balancer, right? So um, as a final destination or, or an intermediary destination for this data. Those collectors might then be doing table-based sampling and sending data to the final destination like Eager or uh, your uh, or your other uh, tracing system. All right, so um, the next pattern that we have is a multi-cluster pattern. And in, in this case here, it is very similar um, to one that we've seen before uh, for the Kubernetes, um, either sidecar or uh, demo set. So the idea is that we have our application, very close to our application, we have a sidecar or an agent that receives this information from that application and sends information to a central uh, collector local to the cluster. Now that collector then makes decisions about data from the cluster itself. So perhaps it is um, adding cluster specific information to the data points. Perhaps it is doing table-based sampling at the cluster level. Uh, but the point here is that uh, we centralize all the data to that collector and that collector then makes a very secure connection to a collector on a cluster, uh, on a control plane cluster. Now, that communication might have different resiliency, different reliability uh, requirements. They may have different security requirements. Uh, so it makes sense to have to, to, um, to extract that knowledge or that, that, that logic into one collector that, that works on, at the boundary. And then on the, at the other side, on the control plane cluster, we then have this uh, collector that is receiving data from all the workloads. So of course, we're not talking about one cluster only, we're talking about multiple clusters sending data to a central uh, control plane cluster. Now that one is receiving data, uh, processing the way that it should be processed, and sending data to the final destination here. Right, so this is the multi-cluster 
Um, and finally, we have the multi-tenant uh, pattern. And in this case here, we have uh, multiple data coming from different tenants, right? So we might have like one application um, that is multi-tenant, or we might have um, uh, multiple tenants as part of our, as clients of our application, right? So um, I named it here, Open Telemetry Collector as a Service, or OTAS, but it's, um, in the real world, it's very likely to be like IT department owns your, a, a, your observability stack um, and each department is then a tenant that is then charged back based on the resources that are consumed. Right? So we have um, we still have one central location for our data to arrive at, so our open telemetry collector that is then uh, taking care of some, um, of some uh, logic that applies to all the tenants, for instance, um, in, in, in doing security, in doing data cleanup, uh, perhaps we are removing some personally identifiable information from the spans, perhaps we are adding some uh, other information to those spans and sending data to the final destination. So in this case here, the two different eagers, one for each tenant. And then we can charge each one of those tenants based on their uh, eager usage. And the open telemetry collector uh, central here, it could then be owned by IT itself. All right, we have a bonus pattern here, and that is a per signal deployment of Open Telemetry Collector. In this case here, um, we we have one collector taking care of the metrics part, and one collector here taking care of the uh, tracing parts. Now there are some reasons why we would want to do that, and the first one is uh, it is the way that. Um, we scale an open telemetry collector doing scraping is different than the way that we scale as a, in a, in a push-based model, right? So uh, when we have a push-based model, we can just scale the number, uh, we scale up the number of replicas that we have, and the new clients will then just find new um, new backends and send data directly to them. Now, when we are talking about uh, uh, pulling data out or, you know, uh, in a typical scraping mechanism from, from Prometheus, we cannot just increase the number of replicas for the, uh, for the collector because, you know, the more replicas that we have, the more scrapers we have and they're all going to the same targets. Uh, so we might want to have a different, um, a different instance of the collector taking care of metrics than the one taking care of the, of the uh, tracing data points. Another reason to have it split per signal is that um, right now the, the maturity of each one of those signals are not the same, right? So uh, tracing components are very mature, whereas the uh, metrics components are not that mature, right? So we might want to um, uh, to mitigate a risk, we might want to get you know all the, the traces on a highly available scenario on a you know production quality deployment for the tracing pipeline and for the metrics pipeline, we have something that, you know, it is more fragile, fragile than uh, the tracing one. All right, so uh, that's what, those are the patterns that I had for today. And um, I think there are key takeaways here, right? Uh, the first one is the open telemetry collector is very versatile, right? So it's, it's, um, it's incredible how many things we can accomplish with the collector. And uh, I think the key here is to understand and getting to know the existing components. So once you know which components you have, you can start planning, you can start drawing and architecting how you're gonna deploy a uh, open telemetry collector. Now, a key thing as well is to uh, understand that collectors can be chained together, right? So if you go back to our patterns here, most of them, they, they, they are about chaining open telemetry collectors together in different uh, levels, right? So we have uh, sidecars talking to other collectors as uh, local, in, in local to the cluster, talking to collectors on a control plane cluster and so on. But they are all the same binaries. They're just configured uh, differently. And finally, mix and match uh, um, components and collector instances, right? So um, uh, plan your deployment, and, um, and a mix and match. And if you, you don't actually have to use the same binary, you can build your own binaries depending on the needs that you have at each of those levels.
All right, so those are some of the resources that um, you can use to um, continue from this conversation here. So some information about OpenTelemetry, the collector, the location here for the contrib repository, the computer, and the patterns for, from this presentation here. If you've used the OpenTelemetry collector before, I'm quite sure that you have your own patterns. So here's my action item to you. Go to this repository, fork it right now, and include your own patterns. Thank you very much.